our final task is to make a Gantt chart. So in this video, we'll look at exactly that, how to make a Gantt chart, the key concepts of the Gantt chart, and we'll create a risk analysis document. So we're looking at time scales uh, in terms of a Gantt chart, how long each individual task takes to complete. As part of this, your first job is going to be to collect information on timescales and to organize those timescales according to the system life cycle and the particular project development methodology that you've chosen. We'll make the Gantt chart, we'll add some dependencies and contingencies, milestones I'd like you to understand but they're not important to, at, at this stage, some annotations when you put it in your documentation to show why you've actually made those choices and what they mean. And finally, we'll make a risk analysis document, which is a fairly straightforward thing. And as ever, you will need to make some recommendations. My assumption here is that you have now gone away and gathered information on your timescales and thought roughly how long each of those tasks is going to take. If you haven't done that, go away and do it now and then come back once you've got a list of tasks and you've arranged them according to the project development methodology that you've used. Our next job is to actually create the Gantt chart and to do that we're going to go to this website which is tomsplanner.com t-o-m-s-p-l-a-n-n-e-r tomsplanner, all one word, dot com and you end up at this page here. You can go for the free option here no credit card needed, you get in, you can only make one Gantt chart, but you only need to make one Gantt chart. So it's a very straightforward product to use and it's easy to learn. There is an 80 second tutorial, uh, which it offers you the minute you get in, uh, watch it. And simply right clicking is the is the key to adding blocks of time and to, and to adding uh, tasks. So it's very straightforward to use. But I'm gonna show you how to use it, but watch that 80 second video first and then carry on with my video after that. Here is an outline of a Gantt chart that I've created. And you can see up here, I've divided this into uh, requirements analysis, design, execution, uh, testing, deployment, and evaluation. All right, so those are my key subject areas, my key topics. And if you need to add a new group, which is what these are called, all you do is you right click and you choose add new group. Equally, if you want to add a new row, you click on the row and you right click and you do add row. And then you can right click and you can remove row. So that's your first job is to create the groups, which are your headings, and then under those groups to put in, to type in the different tasks that you're gonna to have to do and you will end up with something that looks remarkably like this. Yours will be different, don't just copy mine. I don't wanna see my exact variation here and I've made mine slightly different to ensure that you don't copy it, but this gives you a very good idea of what you're supposed to do there. Right, the next thing is, these are our tasks. Over here, this is our time frame, and these are called time blocks. So to add time blocks, you simply, guess what, right click and you select add time block you choose the color. My recommendation is that you choose a different color for each group that you've got here. So I'm going for this group, I'll choose yellow. And in fact, I don't want it there because that's just my heading. So I'm gonna click and drag it and drop it down there. So can you see when I click on it, it's saying 6th of November to 6th of November. And that tallies with the date up here, the 6th of November. If I want it to last longer, I go to the edges and I click and I drag, and I'm now making it last for 10 days, for 13 and a half days, and so you can decide how long you want each uh, each task to last. So this part's pretty pretty easy to do. You can copy that time block, you can, uh, you can paste it into here, do the same thing, so you can just drop some time blocks in there, and then you can start to play around with them and see roughly how long things are gonna take. Now, the way this should look ultimately is that, let's move this one across a bit and along a bit, is that you're gonna end up with one job happening after another. So this thing is slowly gonna snake its way from left to right, and ultimately you should finish one job before another one starts. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm not even thinking about how long things will actually take. This is the kind of shape that you're going to be developing. And in fact, up here, 
I've got those. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to come to contingency time in a second. So can you see how I've allowed? Let's have a look. Let's click on that. Eighth to the fourteenth of November. What's that? Six days for outlining a potential solution. I've got fourteenth. I've got five days for designing the app. Mm, might want a bit longer than that actually. Um, I've got three days for agreeing the solution with the client. Now, one thing you can do to make your life a lot easier, and that's use dependencies. Dependencies is the notion that you have to complete one task before moving on to the next one. This is much easier to understand in the context of building a house. So for example, you would have to lay the foundations and allow two weeks of the foundations to dry before you start building floors or walls. You can't put in windows until you've got walls. You can't put a ceiling on until you've built walls. You can't put the second floor on until you've built the first floor. You can't put the roof on and so on. So this works in exactly the same way. And you can use um, a little trick called dependencies. So let's go to outline potential solutions here. And I'm gonna right click. You right click for everything with this program. It's so easy to use. Click on add dependency and then click on the thing that it's dependent on, which is that one there. And can you see it's put a little arrow there? I'm gonna do this all the way down now. Add dependency, click on my next one, click on that one, add dependency, and click on my next one. Now look what happens when I move this block of time over to here. It's saying this is dependent on this being done. So I can't go onto this one until this one is done. So this is really quite a handy way of, of, uh, of working. And can you see when I move this block forwards, it moves the block below it with it because this block is dependent upon this task being done first. I hope that makes sense. So dependencies, a really handy way of doing it. And also it shows that you understand something quite important in project planning. The other thing I need to explain to you here is contingency time. Can you see I've got it over here? Contingency time, you're building in time headroom for things to go wrong. So say, for example, you get to, you give it to the coder down here to write the code and the coder says, oh, we agreed four days, but it's going to take me a fortnight to do this. I've just had a new baby um, and I'm sorry, but that's more important. So I can get it done, but it'll take a fortnight. Or you try and deploy it on the App Store and actually the App Store has gone down for a week or they've just changed their settings and you've got more work to do. So something can happen at any of these stages that will make you go slightly out of sync to be late with things, in which case you can build in contingency time. So here I've added a little block of time. Now I've chosen to add a contingency block at the end of each series of uh, phases, at the end of each series of activities. So at the end of requirements analysis, I've put some contingency time here at the end of design, at the end of execution, and at the end of testing. So what you can do with your contingency time, which I recommend that you make the same color. So I'm gonna copy that block and I'm gonna paste it into, oh, I put that one there, so I don't want that. Let's get rid of that, Let's delete that. Right click and do remove. And then I'm gonna paste in my contingency time there. There we go. And there's my other contingency time here. Paste that in. Uh, down here, paste that one in, and so on. And I can then make my contingency time, I'm gonna to go to this one here, and I'm going to add a dependency, and it's there. I'm gonna click on this one, add a dependency, and it's there. So now I can move around my contingency time, and I'm gonna add a dependency here, and put it on there. Now, in the case of your project, Everything is contingent on the previous thing having been done, because I'm guessing most of you are using the waterfall method. If you're using the iterative method or any kind of iterative method, you will need to have a slightly different approach, but there are still going to be dependencies that you can show. You aren't gonna be failed on this task if you don't show dependencies, but it's just good practice in project planning. And also it's quite useful to know because this is how it's done in the real world. So there we go. That is a really simple explanation of how you will put your Gantt chart together. Let's go back to our presentation and see what we've done. So we've now created a Gantt chart. We've looked at dependencies. We've looked at contingencies. The next part is to annotate your Gantt chart to justify the conclusions. I want to show you what another student has done here. 
this was a student from last year and you can see that you've got the scheduling feasibility he's talking about the time limit because he did go and ask Justin which I'm sure you have done by now about how long the project should take he used Tom's planner and he chose to take screenshots from uh, the Tom's planner screen and put them straight into his word document I think this is a really good approach so in which case you would go to Tom's planner here and you would do a screenshot which is that for me on Mac and then I could simply grab that, go up to here, and he decided to do it via each different phase. So he would have taken this part here like so, he would have pressed enter, and then he'd have gone to his Word document, paste it in there, there we go. Now, in terms of annotating this, you could then put in a text box, so let's do insert uh, text box, which is over here somewhere, uh, draw text box, and then you would say what this states. This demonstrates the uh, requirements analysis phase of my project. I feel that uh, we've got six days, whatever it is, six days for X is appropriate because dot, 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 dot. Now, you needn't have lots and lots of detail here and I really can't spell because, can I? There we go. But you do need to show your workings. Doesn't need to be an awful lot of work, but just some simple annotations to show what it is and why you've made that decision. It's just evidencing everything that you've got there. Last thing is the risk analysis document. The risk analysis document is this guy here. And let me explain this to you. I have made a simple um, table. It has got one, two, three, four different columns. In the first column is a risk to your project. In other words, Windows or Mac upgrading their operating system. Over here in the second column, I'm talking about the likelihood of that risk happening. Is it likely or is it extremely unlikely? Example, um, it raining over the next week in the UK, very likely. Uh, an earthquake happening in Crawley very unlikely. So that's what you're looking at here is likelihood. Potential impact. If it rains, potential impact is a one because we're quite used to rain. If we have a volcanic eruption or an earthquake, that's going to have quite a high risk. Now, you're not planning for tsunamis, earthquakes or acts of God here, but you are looking at things that could derail your project. For example, the coda leaving the coder not being able to code, an operating system upgrade. Think through four or five different things that can go wrong and then grade them on their likelihood, on their potential impact. And this mitigation, the word mitigation is what can you do to stop it happening? What can you do to prevent it or to lessen the impact of it? And here you can see I've said check Windows and Mac websites regularly and so on. So that gives you an idea of what you need to do. So at the end of this, ensure that you make a recommendation based on the schedule that you've produced.